Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. We have a special treat for you today. We're here with Ricky Skaggs, and we're going to talk about how a guitar player can get started playing mandolin. It's great to have you here. Great to be here, Mitch. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm holding this mandolin, and, and that's about as far as I've gotten with it. But I've played guitar for a while. So first of all, what's the difference? Uh, the tuning is different, right? right. We've got mm -hmm. different strings and things. Tell uh -huh. us a little bit about that aspect of the mandolin. Well, it's like a violin. You have uh, E, A, D, G. It's all its fifths. Mm -hmm. So it's the same, uh, same tuning as a, as a violin. Uh, on its double strings, which you have to keep them in tune. Right. <laughs> Thank God for tuners nowadays. Uh, my dad would, he couldn't really stand it when I started tuning, you know. Right. <laughs> Finally, he said one day, son, if you're a little out of tune, it's okay. It just sounds like there's more of us playing. <laughs> Right, right. Natural now that, of course, that was Dad that showed me my first basic male bass chords. There's, when I got my first mandolin, I was five, and I'd never played an instrument before. So okay. this, this was it. This was G. Okay. And then go move up, next strings. That's C. And then he played D like this. Which is a little hard to grab because I don't play it much. All I don't right. play it that. <laughs> right. But, so you're back. So that was the one, four, five, or the G, C, and D. And I'd been singing already before I got the mandolin, so he got snowed snowed in at a, at a job up in Lima, Ohio, where he bought my first mandolin, and he uh, was up there two weeks, couldn't get home. But when he got home, I was singing and changing the keys, you know. Right. So he was so, so happy about that. And, uh, but it just started, I don't know, it just kind of started, uh, I started, you know, cause I kept it around me all the time. Like, like a, almost like a little kid would carry a little blankie around, you know? Right, right. And I just, I just played it all the time, you know, mm -hmm. I'd go to my bedroom and play and, you know, but uh, I guess, I guess m mostly, mostly chords for the first, you know, a while. And then I, I got to where I could play, I gave it a little more volume, right. add that, which is an octave of the, the G. Right. And then, if you get D, mm -hmm. then you play that. Uh, Same kind of thing. Uh huh. And then instead of that, move up to here. Yeah. Mm hmm. Look at me. I'm playing mandolin. You couldn't even spell mandolin when I'm you come in here. Now, now you, you, you're playing one. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So it seems like it's a little bit different technique. It seems like I'm having to go up on my fingers a little bit compared to the way that you play more guitar. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that true? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, that 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 basic or that, that little thing there, I, I would never play that any, anymore unless I'm just showing people the three chords I learned. <laughs> right. You know, but... Because, you know, there's so many more positions to play, you know, D, you know, even that. But, uh, you know, learn your chords, learn your scales, you mm -hmm. know. Then. Sure. Then. Play them in every key, you mm -hmm. know. Right. You know, and uh, then there's all kind of scales you can do. My, my father-in-law used to, you know, Buck White, great mandolin piano player, used to tell ever, you know, tell everybody that they'd ask him, you know, uh, what, what do you do to be really good, Mr. Buck? And he said, every song you know, learn to play it in every key there is. You oh, know? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so boy, that's <laughs> like, oh, uh, maybe. Maybe I don't need to be that good, but you know, because right. that, that's kind of kind of hard. But uh, anyway, um, but it's good. It's good to know to, to know the neck. Just where the octaves are. Mm -hmm. But, um, and then I just, you know, you could play, uh, uh, and, and 
then, you know, learning to pick is, you know, that's kind of a, that's a hard thing. And of course, you know, mandolin is just so much tighter. Right. I can see your, you know, your hands are, you know, uh, your fingers are a little, a little bigger than mine. Yeah, I think right. they're a little wider. And, and right. of course, you play, you play uh, classical guitar mostly. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. And I can see that you have the old thumb, the thumb on the on back, the back of the neck. <laughs> yeah, well, good for you, because I never use that. It's yeah. like, no. Anyway, no, I use it, but but it's, uh, you it's know, it's it's more for, uh, you know, well, it's the same kind of thing that you use it for. It, it's a it's a, it's a strengthening, a place to strengthen your, your pull down on the string. So, right. yes, it's just that, that uh, you know, I wouldn't play, I wouldn't play like that. You know, I would, I would use it more. So you're going to wrap it up this uh -huh. way. Well, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, but when I saw I uh, saw your hand, uh, your thumb back there, I said classical guitar. <laughs> yeah, so but uh, you know I I learned mandolin first, then I transitioned to guitar. Okay. So a lot of my guitar playing uh, comes out of you know mandolin style, mandolin playing. Even though it's not the same notes, mm -hmm. not the same tuning. Uh, it's uh, it's something that I, that I hear, something that I learned, you know, and uh, and then I started playing fiddle after I started playing guitar. I started playing fiddle, and fiddle is the same fingering as the mandolin, right? But now you have the devil coming to your right <laughs> arm. It's called a bow, right. a fiddle bow, <laughs> and uh, who leashed that thing, you know? And uh, but that's a tough one to you know to um, really learn and, and get smooth on is just it takes a lot a lot of practice I bet. you can be much more proficient with a you know with a with a pick mm -hmm. you know but you're not going to be picking the fiddle but uh, right. anyway but so is it the same uh, you use a regular guitar pick when you're playing or the same style of pick yeah, yeah these are uh these are blue chip mm -hmm. picks I, I really like them i, I love tortoise you know if, uh, finding tortoise shell is uh kind of hard to find these days but sure. But I love the sound of tortoise. I love to record in the studio with tortoise. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful sound. And um, but uh, you have to get them thick enough to where they really bring the tone out here. I think okay. for a long time in my early days, I was playing a little too thin. I was playing a, a too thin, you know, pick that was a little thin. I'm playing now. The tone I get now is much, much harder, much deeper. Right. And I play on these corners up here. So you turn the pick. Yeah, a lot of people ways. play. I mean, you can hear that. Listen, to the difference in this. Yeah. You've got this much of the pick now that you're using instead of that little tip there. Right. So that's a good lesson there for you, you go. kids. There you yeah. So write me and tell me how how much you've really improved your tone now just by just by changing by it. checking old Rick out here. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the one last question, of course, the the one of the signature mandolin techniques is the tremolo. Uh huh. Do you do that from your elbow? Do you do it from your wrist? Where does that come from? Man, that's that's something I've never really. To me, I've never mastered is this tremolo. It's supposed yeah, to be yeah. like a da 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 If you're playing that tempo, da 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 Mr. Munro was great at tremolo. David Grisman is amazing at tremolo. A lot of a lot of mandolin players are really good at it, but I've just never really sat down and and learned. You know the technique because there truly is a technique of doing tremolo, right? Um, and uh, but it's it's a wonderful thing and and uh, it's used in a lot of bluegrass. Mm -hmm. You know, especially the slower things. You know, just to get that sustain. And I play a lot of downstrokes. Mm -hmm. I think Mr. Monroe played. That's kind of how I learned was from him, mm -hmm. and he played a lot of a lot of downstrokes, like uh, that's all. A lot of that is, is downstrokes, but right. especially his uh, uh, stuff that he would. That's that's so just him and it's it's just the, the style he developed you know 
Um, it's very sassy, you know, very uh, kind of in your face, in your face yeah. with an attitude. A lot of energy. Yep. And, uh, but, but uh, you know, Chris Thielen and, and guys, they play up and down. Andy, Andy Left, which is another great mandolin player, and he plays a lot of triplets, and he plays up and down, up and down, up and down, almost like flat picking a mandolin, like Doc or Tony Rice or some, some of the uh, – Jake Workman's another great – one that, that plays a lot of down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And so, you know, they're getting double notes. You know, that's why they can play so fast. You right, know? right, so, right. Yeah. Very cool. Ricky, thanks so much for sharing your expertise on this uh, wonderful instrument. I've got my chords, so I'm going to, I'm all set. I'm okay. Be, well, now, the mandolin. that <laughs> and 10 cents will, no, I don't think I can buy coffee for 10 cents anymore. So. <laughs> I bet. I bet. We can find you a cup for 10 cents. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Great to see you. Yeah. We appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here at Sweetwater. I'm Mitch Gallagher.